do I want to bring a structural element into the composition, which is um, you know a balancing piece uh, a, that would introduce a sense of duality of the structure of the building I live in and its relationship to this magical time. Hey everyone, I'm Marianne Mitchell. Welcome to Whole Artist Mastery. So it is January, which is winter in my neck of the woods, as you probably can tell by the way I'm dressed and holding a hot jar of um, lemon water. <laughs> and so here I am in my studio. It's been a while since I've been able to focus on my work. And one of the reasons I've been putting it off is that I have about five paintings in progress here and every single one of them I'm stuck meaning I really am without a sense of how I go forward in any of them and um, you know part of it is this time of year part of it is you know having come off a holiday season but part of it is that I've been away from them and have had little time to focus on what it is that or how they're connecting to me. So I'm going to share my thinking process with you um, with a few of the paintings, about three of them, and talk through how I bring myself to get back into the work. So I'm bringing you along with me in how I'm going to go back into these three paintings that I'm going to be showing you. Uh, I think for each one of them, it's been a couple of months since I've been um, really focused on them or even picking up a paintbrush and working on them. So the first one I wanna talk about is the one here on the wall with the bright fuchsia color here and the grays and the charcoals uh, underneath. And so I'm going to tell you how this came to be, what it is. I really started actually to be quite transparent. This was started as a demo for a workshop, an in-person workshop that I was giving in terms of, or the demo was how do you do reckless abandon? And then moving into critical analysis, you know, what do I like here? What do I dislike? And so what you're seeing right now is the end of that critical analysis phase of trying to figure out what do I like, what do I dislike, and the next phase is integrating the emotional connection and your compositional decision making. And that's where I'm stuck because my emotional connection really never developed with this piece. And I suspect you understand what I'm talking about, that maybe you have some artwork that you're working on and you're, you kind of feel blah about it because you're without any emotional connection. And it's really hard to keep moving in the development of a painting when you are without that emotional connection. So the first thing I do when I'm in the place that I'm speaking of is to sit and just be with a painting for a while. Sit on a stool, in a chair, stand for however long it takes to start to read the piece, to start building a reciprocal relationship between how you feel and what the painting seems to be about for you. Many great artists have talked about this. Um, the abstract expressionists would sit for a long time with their carton of cigarettes and their bottles of scotch. <laughs> and I call it your virtual scotch and cigarette moments. And um, wait for the painting to tell them what to do. How long can that take, you might be asking? Well, it can take anywhere from a minute to a month to a year. And I have actually had a couple of paintings where 
it's taken me a year to figure out what the next step is. And then I get going and I'm in a completely different place than where I was a year before. So I can go back in with 0% investment or connection to any sort of bad feeling I might've had about it. So let's get to this piece. Um, and I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, what I like about it and what I envision potentially doing going forward because we all know that at least in abstract work like this I have an idea of what I want to do without knowing exactly what's going to happen. So one of the things I do is I look at it as I have it and then I turn it upside down because I've already determined that this is a piece where either the the dark or the red are going to be at the top or bottom. Personally, I think it would be, um, I'm less intrigued by a composition like this as a vertical. Um, so turning it like this. And so the first question I'm going to ask myself is, or I've been asking myself is, okay, I, this is my favorite part of the piece. Actually, my favorite part of the piece is the relationship between this bright orangey fuchsia color, which is an unusual color for me. My oranges are usually more orange or reds are, are redder. Um, and so I like this color. And I, I think part of the power of this color is its juxtaposition to this kind of gray, warm gray cocoa uh, color, which has the tones of this dark charcoal gray underneath it. And so, and then having the dark charcoal gray down here. So I think for me, compositionally, what's keeping me stuck is having this horizon line placed where it is. It's basically creating um, a three-third composition here. And so I'm, I'm having trouble deciding, do I want to get rid of this? Do I want to keep this color combination? Maybe I would get rid of this and bring the dark charcoal up a little bit more. And as I'm talking to you, I'm thinking, you know, maybe that's what I'll do because you want to look at the clues that are in your painting. In other words, what's emerging either ever so slightly or just about to really become a compositional element. So I see this line here emerging. And I could see bringing this color all the way up like this because the impact of this dark charcoal color next to the bright fuchsia could be or would be very dramatic, I think, uh, with this in-between liminal space of a gray, which that idea really intrigues me. I'm very intrigued by the space between one element and another element, which is that liminal space, that liminal time, that liminal feeling, which means that, you know, without definition, but the definition comes from the, um, the finite or the defined elements on either side of the undefined area. And so there's a lot of mystery in that liminal time. Just like when you're in your life and you're without direction, there's, you know, you're shrouded in mystery, which can be very comfortable for a lot of people and can be very disconcerting for others, which is part of what I like about the whole concept of having this be an in-between space because it can invite comfort it can also invite a feeling of slightly being on the edge. So as I've been talking this through with you in my own head, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring this color up 
up to about here and um, wait and see what happens. But in the meantime, I'm going to now talk to you about the blue piece. So let this piece is a little, has a little bit, it has, obviously it's a different story, it's a different painting, it's a different color scheme, but it also is different because I had this feeling that I wanted to have this painting embody, which for me can also be, or starting that way can be a real challenge because when I have something concrete definitively in my mind, it actually keeps me from going to that pure reckless abandon place. Uh, which I have found, at least in my own work, to be the most effective way in having an abstract painting really come, really develop into something that's whole. Uh, so what's the idea? What's the theme? What's the feeling, the theme? So I live in the country in a very old farmhouse, which you can probably guess that this is uh, an old space <laughs> and every morning after I make my coffee I take my coffee mug outside whether it's uh, you know 80 degrees in the morning or 10 degrees in the morning and especially at this time of year it's so magical because I stare up in the sky and it's it's this color it's like these colors and the bright blue, depending on what time of day it is, is starting to emerge. And it's so, I find it so magical, <clears throat> that, that still quietness of the day just on the edge of emergence in this blue, mysterious time. And so that's what I really want to capture here. And because of that, I'm having, I'm feeling stuck in, well, what other colors can I bring in here? And I typically now would bring in warm colors because it's the relationship between warm and cool that creates luminosity. So I'm trying to figure out, well, what kind of warmth do I want to bring in here without actually introducing oranges or yellows? Um, or pinks. Uh, <clears throat> it might be a, a pink glow. Um, and then I also have to think about, well, what kind of a compositional structure do I want here? Do I want this to be amorphic, to remain this very veiled, mysterious, um, undefined structure? Or do I want to bring a structural element into the composition, which is um, you know, a balancing piece uh, a, that would introduce a sense of duality of the structure of the building I live in and its relationship to this magical time, which I feel uh, when I'm here in, in this space and looking outside and the energy between the defined walls of the house and being outside. So as I'm talking to you about this piece, it's interesting because this is the one I actually feel more emotionally connected to and yet, and maybe that's because, or maybe, yeah, maybe that's why I'm not sure yet what I want to do compositionally because I'm a little bit afraid of losing some of this character, which I know that feeling very well. And maybe some of you know what it feels like to be afraid to keep going because you don't want to lose something. I also know that that's the best way to remain stuck. And so the best way to get out of that place of being stuck in a painting is to give yourself enough distance in your emotional attachment to the painting to be able to go back into it without worrying about losing what's there. So I have to check in with myself and decide, am I ready to do that? 
uh, there's a part of there's a big part of me that's still very much enjoying the way it is and yet for me I know it has yet to really reach that place of resolution uh, somebody asked me recently well why wouldn't you consider this finished now well the reason I wouldn't consider it finished for me is because the paint surface is less sophisticated less developed than what I normally do so I think I would always feel like it's pretty but it's not there yet so you have to check in with yourself to say uh, well, somebody else might think this is finished, but for me, it still has a ways to go. And so that's how I feel about this piece. So the next one I'm going to talk about is one that does have structure in it. And this painting has, oh gosh, I think I started this probably at least two years ago, if not more. <laughs> And it has been a perpetual demo piece for me with people who are working with me in mentorship programs. You know, how do you make an edge? How do you create this kind of glow? How do you work with opposite colors? How do you work with strong colors and reflected colors? Um, how do you compose with shapes? All of those things have allowed this painting to arrive at its current iteration. All of which is to say, I have very little emotional connection to this. And I say very little because I am intrigued by this crevice here. And originally that was a huge um, story in the piece was I wanted to have this crevice of light surrounded by neutral colors. Well, uh, it went away from that, clearly. Here's this bright yellow, and the blue is bright. So as I'm talking about it now, I'm thinking, well, maybe I, if I take it off the demo block, um, maybe I need to go back and make the, um, these shapes more neutral again. And that would be interesting in a way because the yellow would be shining from behind the blue would be shining from behind and i would make this much brighter again so i think i have a plan so join me in a subsequent video as i choose one of these to go back into i hope this was helpful in terms of me walking you through how I think in terms of getting out of a, a place of um, uh, stuckness. I'm trying to think, what, what's another word for stuckness? Uh, to get a place, to get moving forward in a painting, um, as well as my words. <laughs> and um, I would love to hear your comments below about how you can keep going in your work or if you're stuck on a painting, what do you do? And I look forward to seeing you in the next video or one of the next videos and watching me paint. Thanks so much. See you soon.